worship our King. And come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. Good morning. Our call to worship is printed in our bulletins. It will also be up on the screen. I invite you to follow along with the bold print. The Lord be with you. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? For your mercy. 
mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made I will sing of the goodness of God
of the goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of God. Thank you. 
Let's pray. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Lord, we do come before you this morning in worship. You are worthy of all the praise that we could ever bring. You are lovely and faithful. We marvel at your beauty and your majesty. We see your glory reflected all around us through the work of your hands, in the bright shining of the sun, in the brilliant colors of the fall trees. And we see it most clearly on display in the person of Jesus Christ, our precious Savior, who came to us, saved us, and brought us into new life in you. Lord, we bring you praise this morning for all your wonderful works. Amen. Our prayer of confession is also printed in our bulletins. It will also be up on the screen. I invite you to follow along as we pray these words of confession together. Merciful God, in your presence we confess our sin and the sin of this world. Although Christ is among us as our peace, we are a people divided against ourselves as we cling to the values of a broken world. The profit and pleasures we pursue lay waste the land and pollute the seas. The fears and jealousies we harbor set neighbor against neighbor and nation against nation. We abuse your good gifts of imagination, of intellect, and reason. Lord, have mercy on us. Heal and forgive us. Set us free to serve you in the world as agents of your reconciling love in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear this good news, that this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. Let us believe the good news that our, out of his great love for us, God gave us his Son to save us from, this, from our sins and to bring us into life in him. Let us believe the good news that through faith in this Son, Jesus Christ, we have been forgiven and we are made alive to live for God. Amen. I have always loved Daniel. So I'm going to tell you a Daniel story. Well, not really. I'm going to tell you a story about his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king, Nebuchadnezzar, had a bit of an ego. And so he built a golden statue that was eight stories high, just in case you're wondering how big this thing was. Um, sorry, sidelight here. So it wouldn't pass being in Fergus because more than five stories high. Sorry. So eight stories high. And this was the rule. When the band played, and the long list of what the instruments in the band were are listed in the scripture, when the band played, everyone had to bow down and worship the golden statue that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't. Well, Nebuchadnezzar being kind, I use that in quotes, said, bring them on in. And he brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in, and he said, so you don't worship my gods, you don't bow down when the band plays to my golden statue. And they said, no, we don't. As an interesting line, we don't have to give you an excuse. In other words, we're not ultimately responsible to you. That's not where ultimate loyalty lies. And we're not going to bow down. Well, Nebuchadnezzar said, I'll give you one more chance. And the band played, and they didn't bow down. And Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind and tied them up and threw them into the fiery furnace. And when Nebuchadnezzar looked in, he didn't see three people. He saw four people wandering around, freed, no impact from the fire. 
And so he went to the edge of the furnace and he called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out and they came out and they didn't even smell smoky, even though they'd been in the fire. And Nebuchadnezzar said, issued a new order, a new edict, that no one should criticize, make fun of, ridicule the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because he saved them from the fiery furnace. Now, I've skipped over a part that actually matters in this story. And that is that when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to the king, we're not going to bow down, they said, whether God saves us or not, from your hand, he is still God. Interesting line, that, isn't it? That yes, God is God when he rescues us, and we love that part. But God's still God if he hadn't rescued them from the fiery furnace. Still God. Still worthy of praise, still to be honored. For God is faithful. God is faithful. Let's pray. God of grace, we thank you for the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and for their trust in you, trust in your faithfulness. Teach us to be faithful too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And having told a Daniel story, we have to sing Dare to be a Daniel. don't think we need to be reminded of what happens on Tuesday in the United States. Let us pray. O Lord, we come with anxious hearts, for the election in the United States has us worried. In fact, it has many people in the world worried. We pray for those who have the responsibility to vote 
Be with them, Lord, and give them wisdom. We pray for those who have the responsibility of counting ballots and those overseeing the election. Be with them and give them calmness of spirit as they, as they act with integrity. Pray for all who will hear of and learn of the results of this election that as we hear, peace would rule. Walk with all the candidates, we pray, that kindness and generosity of spirit may guide their words and their actions. We pray for ourselves, that we would rest in you, O Lord, knowing that you will be faithful in your loving kindness towards us, regardless of the results. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just before our scripture readings, let us pray. God of grace, open our ears that we might hear from you. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Daniel chapter 3, reading verses 13 to 18. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought in those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we, do, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. From Colossians chapter 1, reading verses 1 to 8, the opening of Paul's letter to the church in Colossae. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. To the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ and the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope that is laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so as in bearing fruit among yourselves, from the day that you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to you, he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And finally, from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, verses 10 to 13. And this is Jesus speaking. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with dishonest wealth, who will entrust you with the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? 
No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Here ends our scripture reading for this morning. So we come to the seventh in our series in the Fruit of the Spirit, faithfulness. In many ways, the fruit of the Spirit are a way of talking about the Christian character, about the shape in which Christian characters be lived. And character is a buzz phrase at the moment, appearing in academic studies and more serious popular levels as well. Character is a critical issue. Because we are learning, and we probably have learned this before at other moments of dramatic change in our world, that trying to establish laws, rules, is like trying to hit a moving target. You establish a group of rules or laws for a particular moment, and by the time you finish writing them and agreeing to all of them, the thing has moved, and they become irrelevant. Let me give you one small example of that. There is a lot of energy being spent on trying to figure out what are the rules that should govern social media. But as soon as one set of rules is written, someone quickly has figured out a way around them and a new set of rules needs to be written. Because rules are about prevention, whereas character is about a shape, a way of being. So what if the guidelines for being on social media were the last two fruit of the Spirit we've just talked about the last two weeks. Kindness and generosity. Can you imagine how that would change social media if those were the character traits needed to speak on social media? If you're on social media, believe me, it would blow the place up. It would completely change the way conversations happen. So character has this ongoing, long reality in our lives, shaping us, forming us, giving us the patterns, the ways of thinking about new moments, new situations, new realities. And so that brings us to the word of the day, faithfulness. Faithfulness is about a commitment, a loyalty, a long-term reality in a particular direction. As Eugene Peterson has said, a long obedience in the same direction is really what faithfulness is. I'll give you two examples from everyday life and then move on to other things. So my first one might seem humorous to some of you, and that's okay. The fans of the Toronto Maple Leafs are faithful. No matter how well the team does or how badly it does, they remain faithful. More seriously. I have a colleague who tells this story. When he was in grade 13, a friend came to him and said, I've been in high school with you all these years and I've never heard you swear or use an expletive. Never. How do you do that? And my friend said to his friend, I made a promise to my mother to not swear. Faithfulness. A promise made, a promise kept. A pattern of life, a way of being, a faithfulness. Faithfulness is important because there come moments in our lives When the stakes are high, the demands are serious, and we have to decide, are we going to be committed to the call? Jesus faced one of those moments in the Garden of Gethsemane. In the Garden, just before the crucifixion, the night before the crucifixion, he prays to the Father, if it is possible, take this cup from me. There's a wavering, a wobble. Because Jesus knows that picking up the cross is not going to be easy. That being faithful to the call will be costly. Faithfulness is costly. But Jesus remained faithful and goes on to pray, but not my will, but yours be done. A loyalty, a faithfulness, 
a commitment. And that call and that pattern are that in sometimes in our lives, there will be moments when faithfulness comes with an extreme cost. A moment when we say, is this worth it? And we are invited in that moment to be faithful. But let me come at this at a slightly different angle and use a different Daniel story. Daniel in the lion's den, not his three friends. So a different king, not Nebuchadnezzar, had issued an edict that no one could pray to anyone but the king for, th- for a month, for 30 days. But Daniel, who by this point is in his late 70s or early 80s, who throughout all of his life has prayed three times a day facing towards Jerusalem with the windows of his house open so he can pray, doesn't change his pattern. This is his part of his everyday ordinary habit, the way he lived his life. And they catch him praying and report him to the king and the king has him thrown into the lion's den and Daniel survives. But isn't it interesting that Daniel is caught on an everyday, ordinary pattern of life? Not a grand moment when he did something spectacular. Because faithfulness is like that. Faithfulness is an everyday thing, a thing that we make part of our very lives, a thing that hits us, drives us, calls us, but is really very, very ordinary. And I think that that's one of the challenges for us who have been following for a long time, who have been living the life for a long time, Because faithfulness sometimes feels incredibly boring, incredibly uninteresting. But there is a beauty, a wonder, a power in long faithful commitment. When I was newly married, Debbie and I were invited to a 60th wedding anniversary. We'd been married for less than three years. 60 years was unimaginable. Unimaginable. But watching that couple, there was a beauty. A beauty of long commitment, of deep faithfulness, over many, many years. I don't know. I didn't ask the couple whether they thought it was boring or not. That seemed to be presumptuous to ask that question. But there's a beauty, a powerful beauty, to longevity of connection and commitment. And God the Father has that relationship with us, has been faithful to us in Jesus Christ over many, many years. And many of us have had that same connection and relationship with Jesus. It's never boring. Its beauty is there day by day as we grow into it. That's what Daniel discovered. That's what Daniel knew. And so while praying three times a day would have been so easy to say, for this month I'm not going to do it was so much part of who he was, so much part of that relationship that he couldn't not do it. The passage from Colossians takes us a slightly different direction as we think about faithfulness. So Paul opens with his letter to the church in Colossae by reminding them of Jesus Christ and of the faithfulness that God has for them and quickly then turns from the faithfulness that God has for them and their faithfulness to God, turns from that to recognize the love, the faithfulness they have for one another, the commitment they have to each other within the body of Christ. 
Because living the Christian life, living a faithful Christian life, is about this relationship with God, yes. But from that faithfulness that we have in our relationship to God, a faithfulness flows from that to the world around. Because if there's no horizontal relationship, if there's no ways in which we're living a faithfulness to those around us, then the real question is about how deep the faith is to begin with. But we can't live in relationship with those around us without a strong, solid relationship with the triune God of grace. For it's the Holy Spirit who gives us the ability to live faithful lives with those around. And yeah, we need faithfulness to live with the people around us. To pick on kindness for a moment. It might be easy to be kind the first time someone cuts in line ahead of us at Zares. The 15th time the same person does that, it's not so easy to be kind. Faithfulness, commitment to the other, is about believing that God is at work in them shaping them, changing them. That God who's in the business and is being patient with us by the power of the Spirit, who's faithful to us but patient, invites us to be patient with those around us, trusting the Spirit's at work in them. I hear that faithfulness, that faithfulness that God is at work, in the lives of those around us, when I hear of parents who pray for their children and grandchildren in hopes that lives would change, of people who pray for their neighbors in the same way, that transformation would come. There is a faithfulness, believing that God is at work by the power of the Spirit, and trusting that that faithful God will work as we are faithful to the other person. Because people who are difficult, people who are hard to get along with, are really easy to cut off. To say, I want nothing to do with you. To cut them off. But the invitation is to be faithful to faithful to the relationship, living out the faithfulness of God towards them as well. The Luke passage takes us in a quite different direction in thinking about faithfulness. Jesus says, those who are faithful in little will be faithful in much, and those who are not faithful in a little bit will never be faithful in great matters in in much. I have no idea why my professor at university told this story to a small group of his students, but he did. He said, I have advice for you. This is what you need to do. When you get on a join a company or an organization or whatever it is, school or wherever you get hired, brand new, volunteer for whatever committee you like, then quickly volunteer on that committee to be the secretary of the committee because no one wants to be secretary and they'll all be thrilled that you want to be the secretary and do a great job of being secretary for three or four meetings and then go to the next meeting and say, I'm sorry, I've lost all the minutes. Because, he said, you'll never be asked to be on a committee ever again. Faithfulness in little does lead to faithfulness in more. We know that. We see that in the lives around us. We may have experienced that ourselves. Now, Jesus is giving good advice about living life, but he's saying something deeper here. If we are faithful to our calling in the moment, faithful to what God is asking us to do in the moment, we will hear God calling us to greater things, to more responsibility, to other things as well. 
that as our lives are shaped by the Holy Spirit, as we become people who live the faithfulness, faithfulness in the world around us, we will be invited to more, to take up other tasks, to hear his call in deeper ways, so that at the end of time, we will hear these words, well done, good and faithful servant. Because to be perfectly honest, I can't imagine a better blessing from God than that. Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. We're going to sing the hymn, God, You Spin the Whirling Planets. It'll be projected on the screen. The words, the, the tune is well known, you'll know it as soon as you hear it. Um, the words are by Jane Huber Parker, who is now deceased, um, but was the wife of a Presbyterian minister in the United States, and had, has done enormous, has written over 70 hymns, new words to old tunes, and this is one of hers. Lord God, we thank you that you have been faithful to us. That your son, Jesus Christ, was faithful to the cross. So because in the cross we find our hope, our freedom. Shape us to be faithful people. That in our faith in you and in your son, Jesus Christ, we would be shaped and formed into people who are faithful to you and to Jesus. Shape us for the long haul. That we would be faithful through all the days ahead. 
Give us grace that we would be willing to wait for others, faithful to them even as we wait for them to be transformed by your grace and by the Holy Spirit. Move us beyond feeling bored by faithfulness to see its beauty, to live in its wonder. For we long to hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. We come praying for our world. For Lebanon, Gaza, Israel, Iran, Yemen. They're all interrelated, Lord. And we cannot see how peace in one place cannot happen without peace somewhere else. And we don't know how that will happen. But bring it about, we pray. We pray the same in Ukraine and Russia for your peace to come. Remember those who are sick, those under a doctor's care. Remember those who grieve. We pray for those who are anxious and distressed by life. We also come, come saying our thanksgiving and our rejoicing in the goodness that you have brought to us. And in this silence, we bring to you our thanksgivings and our requests, knowing that you hear us. We pray all of these things in the strong name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's good to get together to celebrate God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There are some announcements to bring to your attention. So you have an insert there about the new men's Bible study and details about it. If you have more questions, please speak to John Donaldson. And the other is an insert about the Angel Project. So there are four families that we have um, connected with, that we're being connected with, um, who are looking for Christmas gifts for their children. They're detailed there. And so have, have, a look, <clears throat> have a look through that. If you've got questions, um, you can talk to Linda. Let's give to God who's been so gracious and generous to us. Our tithes and offerings will now be received. Let's pray. God of grace, take these gifts that we return to you. Use them that all the world might know the faithful love of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing the great hymn for all the saints. It's appropriate that we're singing this hymn two days after All Saints Day, but I also think it fits our sermon and our theme today because part of the way I think we learn faithfulness is from the examples of those who've gone before and lived lives of faithfulness. So let's sing together for all the saints.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit is now and forevermore. Amen.